Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Google Education Search Analysis for Q1 2014. My name is Jennifer Howard, and I lead the education practice for Google. And we're here today to review the emerging trends within the search environment for ed higher education from last quarter. So the goal of this Hangout each quarter is really to review the, the trends and provide insights into the zeitgeist of prospective students, as well as ideas where you can double down your marketing efforts and find pockets of efficiencies and opportunity in your overall recruitment effort. So joining me today on the call, I have Rachel Myers, who's our Sales Strategy and Operations Manager for Education. And she's here to help address any detailed questions that might come up regarding the data or the methodology itself. So a quick note on the methodology. Each quarter, we take a look at a very robust set of custom education search terms. And we do an analysis to understand um, the trends that we'll see across desktop, tablets, and mobile. And it's very intentionally um, intended that it will provide insights into the mindset of the prospective students. So we've broken the section, broken the presentation down into three sections. We'll have the state of the industry overall, we'll have auction insights, and then we'll have my favorite section, the emerging trends. Things that are changing um, on Google.com that maybe we had not seen before in the higher education space. So before we get started, a few notes on logistics. Um, I will review the data over the next 20 minutes or so, and then we will take questions from our live Google Plus viewing audience. So if you're watching, you can ask questions via the Q&A app, and you may need to click on it to expand it if you don't see it, but it's there, and we'll be answering questions live. We will post a recording of this Hangout on air on the same event page that you've entered in through, so you can watch it after the event is over or share it with other colleagues who might be interested. Um, and then finally, if you are a current education advertiser on Google.com and work with somebody on my team, the team will be reaching out over the next week or so with um, specific insights as it relates to your brand and your efforts um, um, as this data has been formed. So with that, we will um, kick it off and let's dig into Q1 2014. So the state of the industry. So this is where we take a look at the overall view of the higher education industry through the eyes of Google.com. So we use query demand. And when we're talking about queries, we're talking about specific keywords that are entered into the search box on Google.com. And we use that as a proxy for demand on a given um, area. And so let's take a look at what's happening on demand over um, for last quarter. So what you can see here are the growth trends over the last four quarters. So you're looking at year-over-year -year growth in queries um, since Q1 of 2013. So you can see we've seen um, small yet steady growth um, year-over-year -year for the last four quarters. However, the news for this quarter in Q1 is that the demand in higher education is flat. So we saw 0% year-over-year growth um, in query demand. So while it is not up, as we've seen in the last four quarters, um, the good news is it is not down. Um, and we can dig in really deeply to understand kind of where um, there's fluctuations both up and down um, within the overall query set itself. Um, when we do look at queries, we can categorize them in lots of different ways. And we slice and dice the data um, at, at different levels. And we'll go through a variety of them throughout the course of this presentation. Um, however, at the highest level, we always look at brand and non-brand. So branded terms are when someone actually types in a query um, with a specific school name in mind, and the non-brand would obviously be the opposite. So at first, we're looking at EDU brands. Um, EDU brands themselves had flat demand year over year. And because they make up the lion's share of the queries that actually happen on Google.com, um, they are really driving um, the flat demand that we, we see in the category overall. Um, so let's look at how this breaks down in the types of brands that prospective students might be considering. 
So you may remember from last quarter, we saw traditional schools making up a bulk of the traffic, followed by community colleges, um, and then finally career educators. And so we see the same trend carrying forward in Q1. So you can see here that traditional schools, de um, the demand for those types of schools um, has increased slightly 1% year over year. Um, community colleges remain flat, yet really where we're seeing the decline is for the career education space. So the very traditional nonprofit or online school, or the sorry, the for-profit and the online schools are declining year over year by 5%. Now this is not true for all brands. So there are some brands that are seeing some um, increases in the demand. But however, as a category, it's down. Um, this is consistent with some of the trends that we've seen certainly in the enrollments in this space, but it's um, also being reflected here in the demand that we're seeing on Google.com. But of course, education searches um, you know, do dis um, extend um, beyond brands, and this is not, this is not something that we have to um, take in isolation. For the schools who do are seeing a decline in the brand, there are things that we can do to help increase that traffic and to help increase that demand. So if you do work with one of the Google um, advertising teams here, please talk to your team because we've got some very good insights and interesting um, opportunities for you to use other strategies to actually create additional awareness um, and ultimately increase the, the demand for your brand. So, um, so that's one of the key things um, to be thinking about from this presentation. But obviously, not all brand all the time. There are other areas and different ways that prospective students look for schools. And so um, if we look at the, um, the opposite side of the, of the threshold here, we're looking at EDU non-brand. So these are terms that actually do not have a school specified in the term. So we do see an increase here, 2% year over year, where prospective students are looking for terms um, that are higher up in the marketing funnel, if you will. So for those of you who are big believers in the marketing funnel, you can think about it in terms of these are folks who have not yet made a decision about where they want to go to school, but they know they do want to go to school, and they're looking for particular types of programs or degrees. And so let's look at how that actually breaks down in the non-brand funnel. So when we break it down, we look at three distinct categories. We look at program terms, which are things like nursing, business. We look at general terms, which would be very simple terms like online education, online course, online college. And then finally, we look at degree terms, which is where the query clearly indicates on the level of education the student is looking for, whether that be PhD, bachelor's, associate's degree, um, et cetera. And so the order that we have these in on this slide are the um, order of volume. So program, it makes up the highest volume of these terms, followed by general, followed by degree. And then the percentages that you see are actually the growth rates. So while the demand for the brands um, is flat, there's still room for um, getting your brand out there by investing in some of these um, upper funnel terms and really going deep on program, general, and degree. So if we take a look at, um, um, so, so that's, the, so that's the, the program terms themselves. So now we're actually gonna change gears. So now we're gonna take a look at um, what this actually means for advertisers in the auction and share with you what's happening and those auction insights. So because this, we use the search queries themselves as a, as a proxy for demand. We use the auction insights themselves as a proxy for advertising opportunities and seeing you know, the different opportunities that might exist. So let's take a look at what we're seeing in the competitive landscape. So here we have it. So for Q1 2014, the year-over-year -year growth in um, ads per query was up, cost per click was up, and, but the, the best news on this slide is that clicks were up. So you may recall that in 2013, clicks were often down year over year. We were really having a challenge of, of um, the prospective students um, clicking on the ads as often as advertisers would want or certainly need. Yet we saw this big increase in click volume growing at 9% year over year for Q1. 
So one of the things that we think is driving um, this change is certainly um, the um, emphasis the advertisers have been placing on the relevancy of the particular um, ad text itself and a lot of improvements that we've seen in landing pages. And so while this, this is just one hypothesis that we have, but based on our experience, um, improving both of those experiences actually does help improve clicks and we're seeing this play out in the auction. Um, in terms of the competitiveness, that's what the ads per query can really tell us. We can see more ads appearing on every keyword, which means that um, there are more advertisers in the space and more schools competing on the same, on the same keywords. So um, that, that does provide the schools an opportunity to think about what you're saying about your programs and how you're actually um, expressing the value that your programs actually provide. Um, so that way you present the most attractive offer to the prospective student when they have so many options even on one given page. Um, and a little more good news on this page is that um, while cost per click is up 6%, it's not up as high as we had seen through the course of last year. So last year, most quarters we saw a double digit increase in the cost per click, which obviously d drives direct um, cost implications to marketing budgets and cost per acquisition, cost per lead, cost per enrollment. And so um, it's only up 6%, um, which is less than we saw last year. So um, these numbers represent both the brand and non-brand queries. So this is the overall um, space. Um, but you can see that there are some, um, some significant changes that a marketer can really um, you know, act on here. So let's take a look at um, where we saw some real efficiencies what might be driving some of um, the news that's on this slide. So within the competitive landscape itself, we're seeing um, some really bright spots when we have advertisers focusing on geolocations. So very specifically, this means advertising around um, specific, whether it's cities, states, or other geographic areas, and really honing in on that. So this would be for schools that have physical campus locations in a given area, or certainly you know, online schools with national programs who really want to increase enrollments on, in um, specific geographies. And so what we're seeing here is that um, the space is not as competitive as we see for the overall market. So the overall market has seen an 11% increase in ads per query, whereas geo only 4%. So there's, st there's not as many options for the prospective student to um, consider. And it also so it makes it a little bit com less competitive for the marketer. Um, the cost per click is actually down. So in a world where we've seen the clicks um, increasing um, pretty steadily, um, and, or, or con at least consistently increasing, um, we're seeing cost per click actually drop. Um, really driving some efficiencies there um, that could make it a smart strategy for uh, marketing folks who are looking for um, ways to um, make more happen with less. Um, and then ultimately, um, we're seeing the clicks increase even higher than we saw in the overall space. And so again, I think that this speaks to um, you know, the relevancy and the tailored nature of what these ads ultimately say and certainly that they're being targeted to very specific queries around specific geographies. So when the students are looking for something that's close to home um, and they're being provided with that answer, um, we're seeing the clicks go up. So for schools who do have either local physical campuses or looking to drive enrollments in certain areas, um, using geographic modifiers um, could provide a really excellent opportunity here. So that's the insights that we have for the auction um, for Q1. So now we will move to um, the last and final section um, of the analysis and my favorite piece of it because it's about the emerging trends. So this is where we really look at things that are happening um, on Google.com um, that have either changed significantly, significantly um, over the course of the time that we've been studying them or potentially new things that we have been looking at um, to try to understand you know, different dynamics that are happening. So the first thing we will look at is mobile. So mobile is a very common theme. Um, most education advertisers are, um, are taking advantage of what mobile can actually provide. 
Um, and it's that does not beg the question that it's because there is a tremendous amount of growth happening in mobile. So if you look at the demand that's happening coming um, from mobile devices, you can see that the queries on mobile are up 23% year over year. So in a world where we see the overall market flat, but on mobile devices, it's up 23%. You can see that there's a lot of opportunity there. Interestingly, eMarketer just presented um, a new um, set of research that indicated that um, mobile usage in the U.S. overall um, was up 23%, which exactly mirrors the trend that we're seeing in education. So prospective students are very much in line with what we're seeing in trends overall. Um, so it does present an excellent opportunity for marketers um, to really enhance mobile strategy and to ensure that we are um, you know, capitalizing on what this growth can ultimately provide. So outside of just mobile, we're consistently looking at other ways that the, um, the prospective student is consuming the content. And so we're seeing that this consumption is evolving, um, not just as it relates to devices, but certainly as it relates to um, the type of content. So specifically, we're talking about video and sight, sound, and motion. And so YouTube um, um, also has become, it, obviously, it's the largest video site. Um, but it's also, if you think about the query box, it's on the home page of YouTube.com. Um, if it were a search engine, it would be the second largest search engine behind only Google.com. And so more and more people are using that search box just as they use um, search engines. And so what we're seeing is that EDU searches on YouTube increased 6% in Q1. So again, whereas traditional searches are flat, we're seeing a good opportunity to answer questions the prospective students have by potentially using video. So the, the two key areas that are driving this growth most significantly are in the trade and vocational areas and training and certification areas. And really, you know, we believe that this has, has to do with the type of content that's being provided um, very specifically, where prospective students or folks who just really are looking to learn something can use video to learn something right there, right then and there. So there are tutorials and those types of content on um, plays that we're really seeing work effectively um, for prospective students and um, particularly in the education category. So that's what we're seeing on YouTube.com. So then going back to Google.com and some of the changes that we're seeing there um, and different ways that um, the prospective student is thinking about education. So what we took a look at is um, what types of questions are being entered into Google.com um, about education? And so very specifically worded as a question that has a what, why, how type of modifier and asking Google a question. And when we saw the, the, the changes that were happening in these questions, it really has a lot to do with feasibility. The student considering going back to school but wondering if they would even be able to, kind of on two key areas. The first being whether or not they would be able to afford it. The second being whether or not they actually have time to do it. So what you're seeing here are um, the, the types of questions that are trending on Google.com. So on the left, these are the money-related terms. How to pay for college, why is college so expensive, how much does it cost? On the right being about time, how long does it take? Um, and then the percentages that you see are the year-over-year -year growth in these types of questions, very specifically worded as questions. So you can see that there is an increase in interest in potentially wanting to go back but wondering if they actually can. So this does present an opportunity for marketers to think about how we best answer those questions and um, how a prospective student could um, make it work for them um, by understanding the reality of both of these situations and what school or program might be the best for them um, in this particular case. So this is a new area that we'll continue to monitor um, and bring you any new insights that we see um, as they emerge. So learning innovation. So we've talked a lot in the past about the rise of the MOOC and the different ways that students were choosing 
to you know consume education materials. Um, you know, and with the MOOC specifically, it was really about it being free. However, we wanted to take a look at what other types of changes or innovations that are actually happening in education um, might a prospective student be interested in, in pursuing. And so um, what we have seen is um, there is a really significant um, increase in demand for competency-based learning. Um, so for those of you who may not be familiar, competency-based learning um, allows students to progress through a particular course as they demonstrate mastery of the academic content itself. So regardless of the time, place, or pace of learning. So they, these strategies provide the flexibility in the way that credit can be earned or awarded and provide students with personalized learning opportunities. And so an interest in this um, has been growing on Google.com you know, over the last couple of years, as this you know, chart indicates. However, in Q1, um, there was a, a pretty significant spike, 52% um, year over year. So this is a new um, approach that certainly is capturing um, the attention of prospective students. And so schools like Western Governors or Capella University who offer this type of program um, really have um, an, an opportunity here to really push um, some of the wonderful benefits that these programs provide and to really answer the questions that these um, students may have about this type of model. We have a new degree on top. So um, we usually share trends um, within the category category, uh, within the degree category on Google. Um, but this quarter, um, we actually have some um, news to share about a shift that actually happened um, in this quarter. So drum roll. The bachelor degree has um, overtaken the MBA as the most high demand um, type of degree on Google.com. And so for the past three years, the MBA has received more searches on Google.com um, than all bachelor's degrees combined, right? So this is a really specific thing for us to, to know is that obviously the MBA is a master's degree but very specifically in business. Bachelor's degree could be a bachelor's degree across any type of, of program that one might be seeking. Um, and so um, this is a big shift that now bachelor's degrees are, um, they have taken over in terms of volume. You can see both of them, you know, the, the bachelor's degree obviously is growing pretty significantly. MBA, um, we'll talk about a little bit later, you know, we're not seeing huge declines there, but the, the volume play here is in the bachelor's degree. So when we look at enrollment, um, bachelor's degrees do, in fact, have the largest number of students enrolled. Um, and so for the 2013-2014 school year, we expect about 1.8 million students will be awarded a bachelor's degree, which is about a 2% increase over last year. So um, this does follow as well that um, potentially more folks are looking for bachelor's degrees. Um, and also high school graduation rates have increased also. So it's at an all-time high of 75%. So this could also be impacting um, the number of students that are entering the marketplace and ultimately looking for bachelor's degrees. So again, MBA is still very popular, um, and um, you know, over half of the MBA programs reported growth last year. So you know, this is not a um, this isn't um, a, a bad situation for MBAs, but this is a really good opportunity for schools who offer bachelor's degrees. Um, so let's look at let's take a look at the degree category overall and see where we have um, growth and and where we we've seen the declines. So as indicated, bachelor's degrees are up three percent and now make up twenty four percent of the overall volume of the degree searches that we see on Google.com. Um, as you can see, one percent higher than the MBA. The other area that's growing pretty significantly is the associate's degree. So again, I think for the same reasons that we just highlighted with regard to um, the, the high school graduation rates improving, um, it would follow that the associate's degrees um, would also be in higher demand as those students try to figure out what they want to do next. So those are the two areas we're seeing the growth. In terms of the areas we are seeing slow down, we did talk about the MBA. It was down 1%. But again, I don't think this is anything to be um, particularly alarmed about because it still makes up 23% of the overall volume. 
but it did drop slightly in Q1. And then the certificates are actually declining. And so they make up the smallest portion of the searches um, to begin with, but they are in decline. So I think this really bodes well also for the schools who offer a more formal certificate um, program, um, you know, more formal degree program, um, because um, perhaps people want something more formal that would ensure them, you know, better employment prospects after the fact. So um, certificates also slightly down. So now we will switch from the degrees to our program analysis, um, which we are going to continue with get with the program. So last quarter we talked about program terms growing in popularity and we continue to see this trend in Q1. So um, let's take a look at um, the programs that are seeing um, the greatest gains. Um, and there's a couple of um, pieces of news here as well. So again, the way this, this slide is sorted is that the, um, the volume of searches is um, the highest with healthcare and all the way down to auto. And then the percentage year over year growth is what we're seeing in the green. And so um, nursing, healthcare and nursing still very, very much on top and still continue to grow. So um, we've been tracking these programs for some time and so any schools with offerings in these areas still have a tremendous amount of opportunity to capture um, the interest that lies around both healthcare and nursing. The news here though, however, is cosmetology has overtaken business in volume. So not only is it the fastest growing degree or the fastest growing type of program being 12% year over year, um, but the volume has reached such a point that it is now larger than business on Google.com. So, um, you know, we've been you know, looking at this really closely you know, to understand, you know, where this might be coming from, and we are seeing um, a lot of growth in the cosmetology and beauty school um, sector. And there's been a lot of growth over the last couple of years, um, even despite the economic recession, um, because employment opportunities in this industry do continue to grow, They're one of the bright spots. Um, and so it's an alluring field for prospective students, not only because it's a short um, amount of time to actually become you know, trained in the field, um, but it does off offer a lot of jobs and also the prospect of entrepreneurship. These folks can open their own salons, have their own shops, and it gives them the opportunity to not only be a practitioner, but potentially be a small business owner. So we've seen the number of schools in this area also increase in the recent years um, to really address this increasing demand. Um, so again, um, you know, not to not to overshadow the the largest area of opportunity being in healthcare. However, um, this was um, a very new emerging trend that we saw. On the opposite side, um, we are seeing some programs that are really decreasing in popularity. So again, the, you know, the volume is still sorted from top to bottom, but the red line clearly shows the areas where um, the year over year growth is in decline. So the largest one being in art and design. Um, again, you know, some you know, hypotheses around here could be about you know, the viability of whether or not these students believe they're going to be able to find a job um, you know, in those areas um, once they graduate. Um, and so for you know, folks who have the art and design programs, Really, the opportunity here is to um, you know, help the students understand the types of careers that are actually available for them um, and to really you know, show the success that you know, the, current, the, the former current, um, student population actually has when pursuing this type of um, program. So, Staying on the idea of um, geo, now we're going to talk about the state of mind. So this is not the state of mind of the prospective student as much as it is the state of the U.S. that happens to be on the mind of the prospective student. So we've talked about geo terms being up 2% year over year. We wanted to take a look more deeply in terms of where that was actually being driven. And so um, the, all of the, the points that you see here on the map, had significant growth um, in Q1 um, in the education arena specifically. The highest being in Maine with an increase of 70% year over year. Um, so these are the top 10 states. Maine is the highest. 
So we did some research to understand what could potentially be driving this growth. And we found that the high school graduation rate in Maine increased for the fourth straight year in 2013. So there's really been a huge focus in getting the kids all the way through high school. So it's, it's, a, um, it's a good hypothesis that there's a larger pool of prospective students that are potentially um, pursuing higher education in Maine, as well as Arizona, Oklahoma, and the others that are listed here. So again, if you have local campuses in these areas, or if you're looking to increase online enrollment um, in any of these areas, um, thinking about the campaign on a local level and really targeting some of these areas could prove quite lucrative um, for your program. So this brings us to the end. So I know we just shared a lot of data with you. Um, and again, you, know, you guys have seen not only from you know, this presentation over the last few quarters, but certainly as the teams bring the data out, we can look at this in a lot of different ways. Um, and we're increasingly looking for you know, new ways to share it and new insights to, to bring. But if you only remember two things from this entire half hour, um, this is what we'd like you to remember. Um, first, reclaim your brand's share of mind. So if you are one of the schools who is faced with the challenge of the declining demand for your brand, um, we really want to help you. So there are a lot of advertising tools that you can do to drive awareness um, and ultimately drive more brand demand, such as through video, display, um, and other um, content like that. So if you do have a Google advertising team, um, please talk to them because we actually are about to bring some really great new information to you in, over the coming weeks um, where we've um, studied the impact that video advertising can have on the brand query lift. And in the education space, very specifically, we have seen an average of a 10% lift in your brand terms um, when you have an active video campaign. So please talk to us more about that because um, you are not in this alone and you can certainly help change the trajectory of what's happening for the demand on your brand terms. Um, the second thing is double down on the non-brand. So um, it's growing, right? And so that's the one area where the prospective students are very, very active and it gives the schools an opportunity to um, get in it, in with the student at the very early stages of their research process. We know from our third party market research that the process for, for prospective students continues to get longer and we also know that nine out of ten of them start out looking for their programs and degrees before they even have a school in mind. So you have the opportunity to really influence their decision and then also drive more demand for your brand because you're influencing them earlier in the process. So, that concludes our presentation. So I will turn to questions on the, um, the event page and we will go from there. So question number one. Um, so you mentioned brand terms make up a large portion of overall query volume for this analysis. How much does brand really make up of the total um, EDU search volume? Um, so I can help answer this one. Okay, great. Um, so, brand is certainly the lion's share in the majority of the searches that we uh, that we see in this analysis. But I would like to note that we are, uh, when it comes to more of the generic terms and the non-brand terms, we tend to track more of the head terms or the very high volume terms in the EDU space. So we're not capturing all of the long tail terms that make up or what one would consider the the non-brand search. So the, the point of this analysis is to uh, really identify directional trends in the larger education industry and not analyze every single query that relates to education. So that's most likely why you see that sort of the, the what we have uh, in the analysis is really skewed more towards brand, um, but uh, it, it is, we, we can also say that we're not necessarily capturing all of the non-brand volume uh, in the analysis either. Thank you, Rachel. No. Yeah. We're done with questions. Okay. There's no more. Great. Okay. 
So I think that's it for questions. So if anybody in the viewing audience has additional questions, please feel free to ask them on the events page, and our team will be able to um, get answers out to you. And I look forward to seeing all of you um, next quarter for um, our next edition of Education Search Analysis by Google. Thanks. <laughs>